Jabuji. Welcome to the fourth video of this lecture series. In the last video, we learned about free expansion. But uh, when I was going through the recording, I figured that for some part of the video, my audio was not recorded. So in the video that I have uploaded, uh, I have trimmed that part out. And in this video, I will just briefly mention those parts before we go to the problems. And also there was one mistake. So I will also like to rectify that. So let me go to the part. Yeah. So when I was uh, discussing the difference between an isothermal expansion and a free expansion, the part where I mentioned free expansion was not recorded. So this was not something crucial because I have discussed about free expansion in that video with great detail. So anyway, I will just briefly talk about this. So first of all, isothermal expansion T is constant, dt is zero and for ideal gas, there will be no change in internal energy. And uh, this is happening because the system is in contact with a heat reservoir. So in this process, heat is being transferred. So dq is not equal to zero. And also this is a reversible process. And for free expansions, no heat is exchanged between the system and outside. The system is thermally isolated. So dq will be zero in this case. And as the gas is expanding against vacuum, dw will also be equal to zero, which is the work done. And from first law of thermodynamics, we will get the internal energy change is also zero. So for ideal gas, we will get dt equal to zero or t equal to constant. And one important difference between them, uh, between these two processes are that the free expansion is irreversible in nature. So that is the thing which was not recorded. So, and there was another mistake when I was calculating change in entropy, I forgot to put the integration signs because, you know, uh, from the first law of thermodynamics, we will obtain that ds is dq reversible over t. So when we are integrating within limits, delta s, which is the change in entropy, will be given by integration over dq reversible over t. So I will just rectify these formulas throughout the note and I will then proceed with the problem. Here I have written it correctly with the integration. And here will be an integration sign. Yeah. Okay. So now let us go to the problems. Okay, so let us start with the first problem of today. This is a problem that appeared in JAM 2011. And the problem states that consider free expansion of one mole of an ideal gas in an adiabatic container from volume V1 to V2. The entropy change of the gas calculated by considering a reversible process between the original state V1T to the final state V2T where T is the temperature of the system is denoted by delta S1. The corresponding change in the entropy of the surrounding is delta S2. Then which of the following combination is correct? So basically we have to calculate the change in entropy for the system and the change in entropy for the surrounding. So let us start.
okay so let us go through what the problem has defined here delta s1 is the change in entropy of the system which is the gas here delta is 2 is the change in the entropy of the surroundings and it is told that the gas is in a adiabatic container so we know that heat exchange with the outside is zero and we have been told to assume that the expansion is isothermal which means dt is equal to 0 or t is constant as it happens in case of a pre expansion so first uh, let us calculate the entropy change of the system okay so what information is given in the question so the initial stage was v1 t and the final stage was v2 t so initial is v1 t and final is v2 t and we can consider this to be isothermal so what will be the change in entropy it will be nothing but integration from initial to final stage dq over t here dq is the heat that is transferred reversibly but in reality the free expansion is a irreversible process so why this formula can be used we have discussed in the previous video it is because the entropy is a state function and the value of change in entropy will only depend on the initial and final state not the path via which the system evolves from the initial to final state so basically we can use this formula only when we are calculating the change in a state function so we can write this as integration from initial to final dq can be written as cv dt plus pdv over t where we have used the formula dq is du plus PDV which can be expanded to be CVDT plus PDV again for uh, knowing more about molar specific heat watch the video 1 and 2 there I have discussed and 
done some problem about these topics. Okay, so here we can write it as two F PDV over T and we take into account the fact that here dt is 0. So, when dt is 0, this term will be 0 and we will have the second term only. Now the gas is an ideal gas which means PV equal to NRT and P is NRT over V. In the question, it is given that we are dealing with one mole of ideal gas, so n is 1. So, we can just put the value of n equal to 1 here and we will get P equal to RT over V. And then the integration will be RT over V dv over t and now here the t terms will cancel out and n will also be equal to 1 and the integration is over v so we can write the limits to be from vi to vf where vi is v1 as defined in the problem and vf is v2 so this will be integration from v1 to v2 r dv over v and this is a simple integration we can do it r ln v from v1 to v2 so this is r ln v2 over v1. So, we can write delta s1 is r ln v2 over v1. Now, if we look at the problem, the all the answers are given in terms of v1 over v2 and also in terms of v2 over v1. So, just for the sake of completeness, we can also write it as r ln v1 over v2, then we will have a minus sign. So, let me box out this answer. Okay. So, now we will go on to the second part where we want to calculate delta S2. Okay, so we know here dq is 0. Since this is an adiabatic process and dq is 0, then delta S2 will also be equal to 0. Note that we are not using the formula delta S2 
equal to integration over dq reversible over t. This formula does not apply here because this process is not a reversible process. But since there is no heat exchange, the entropy change of the surrounding will also be 0 here. So now we have both the answers and let us check. Let me first write the answers here. Delta S1 is R ln V2 over V1 and delta S2 is 0. Let me put a box around the final answer. Okay, so let us check the options. So again, only option C and D have del S2 equal to 0. And if we check the first term also, we will see that option C is the correct answer. Okay, so this was problem one and now we will move to the second problem. We will not go through elaborate steps of the calculation like in this one. So let us go to the second problem. Welcome to the second problem of today's video and in this video we will discuss a problem of isothermal expansion. So the problem was given on IISC entrance exam for physics in 2009 and the problem states that a monoatomic ideal gas of n atoms undergoes isothermal reversible expansion from volume V1 to V2. The change in entropy of the gas is, so again we have to calculate the change in entropy of the gas. Let me just turn on the page rules. Okay. So, let us denote the change in entropy of the gas with delta S and of the gas and the initial state was V1 and suppose a temperature T, the final state was V2 T. So, this is isothermal expansion T is the absolute temperature which is constant. Okay, and it is also given that there are n atoms of gas in the chamber. 
where the expansion is happening. So number of atoms is n. So if we want to calculate the number of moles of gas that can be calculated as small n given by n over n a here needless to say that n a is the avogadro's number so Now we know that delta S is integration over dq which is reversibly given over t from initial to final state and again proceeding like the previous problem dq can be written as cv dt times pdv over t and as this is isothermal dt will be zero so this term will be zero and this integration will be pdv over t from vi to vf where again vi is v1 and vf is v2 now we again go to the ideal gas law where PV is NRT and here N is N over NA, capital N over capital N subscript A. So, P will be NRT over NA V. So, you have to use this expression here. Sorry. N R T N A V times T V over T integration V one to V two and simply T will cancel out and this will give us N over N A times r integration v1 to v2 dv over v which will be nr over na ln v2 over v1 so let me write it clearly delta s is n times r over n a times l n v2 over v1 and let me also put a box here okay so now if we look at the options given we will see that the options is given in terms of Boltzmann constant so to obtain that we know KB, which is the Boltzmann constant, is given as R over NA. So, finally, we obtain the answer as delta S is equal to NKB 
spell in v2 over v1. So the last part was a bit tricky. Students might miss it during a competitive exam where time is crucial. So I will urge you all guys to be careful about this. So this is the answer and if we go to the problem we will see that option D matches our answer and this is the correct answer. Okay. So for today I think we can stop here and in the next lecture we will start something else.